Welcome back to Critter Ed TV. I'm Jed Dodds and I'm here with Clint Elliott and today we are not filming at the Tankerbury Therapeutic Zoo. We're actually in my backyard underneath an awning because it's raining. Jed, it's been raining a lot and might I add a beautiful backyard you have. Thank you so much. Now we were going to be filming our uh, adventure destination episodes where my family just got back from Maui and Clint, your family just got back from Puerto Penasco and from the pictures it looks like you guys had a ton of fun. Jed, we had tons of fun. It was an incredible trip. Judging from the footage that you guys got in Maui, I'm thinking you guys had just a little bit of fun too. We absolutely did, and we can't wait to put those episodes together for you to really show you how dynamic these areas are and some things you can do if you were to travel to Puerto Penasco or to Maui, uh, but it was a lot of footage. It was a lot of footage. It would have been way too much footage for a single episode. Yep, so we are gonna probably be shooting multiple episodes on that, um, and we can't wait to be able to get that out to you guys, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, and it, we were lucky enough to be able to release this week anyway, because as luck would have it, Tucson's having one of its strongest monsoon seasons in years. And the more water, the more wildlife for us to film and show you guys. Yeah, Clint, it's been extremely wet here. The Arizona summer monsoon is famous for helping make the Sonoran Desert the wettest, greenest desert on Earth. And it can be especially strong here in Tucson. Yeah, Tucson averages over 12 inches of rain a year, with over half of it falling during the summer monsoon. But Tanca Verde, where the ranch is, averages over 15 inches. That may not seem like a lot of rain, but it's triple what the neighboring Mojave Desert receives and double what falls in Phoenix. And it isn't just about the rain that falls here in the valley. Tucson is surrounded by four large mountain ranges that average over 25 inches of rain a year up in elevation. And all that water makes its way down into the valley, combines with the rain that falls here, and fills up our washes and rivers. Yeah, flash flooding can be a major concern during the monsoon. Every year, cars get swept up by the water and people need to be rescued. Yeah, flooding in our desert is a serious thing. Tucson's monsoon climate is so unique in the world of deserts that National Geographic came and filmed a documentary on it. It is a special and sometimes scary time. Well, Clint, you got some great video of what the ranch looks like after it rains, and I got some great video of all that rain coming down from the mountains and going into one of the washes. So why don't we go to that video first before we get to the animals you encounter? Let's roll it. Hey guys, it's July 19th, 2021, and I just want to show you what a wash valley in the desert looks like after a halfway decent start to any monsoon season. You can see how many plants are coming up and how quickly they came up. Just a couple weeks ago, this was bare dirt. You can see some flowers coming up in the distance. Anyway, this place is just crawling with wildlife. A lot of people think wrongly that uh, summer in Arizona, especially in Tucson, is devoid of life because it's just too hot. Well, we've had a bunch of highs in the 80s, one day in the 70s, mostly low 90s. I don't want to overstate the cool factor of the monsoon, but uh, still very cool compared to what most people think of as a desert summer. And that makes the wildlife really explode here. It's a lot of fun. Uh, July and August are some of my favorite times to be in Tucson just because of the amount of wildlife. I just saw a garter snake here a few minutes ago. Uh, which only lives near a permanent water supply. So the reason why this part of the desert greens up so much compared to the open desert where our giant saguaros are is because of the type of soil we have. We have very loamy soil, soil here because of all the trees. You can see this tree canopy with the mesquite trees and all the leaves. Now, in the wintertime, all of those leaves fall off. They break down and they make our so soil very loamy, which is very different than the open desert. Maybe somebody watching can chime in and let me know what type of flowers these are because I'm not really a flower guy. I think they're pretty, but I don't know their names. Um, anyway, just thought I'd like, just thought you guys might like to see 
what our Wash Valley Desert becomes in the summer when we have a good monsoon. Wow, Clint, I'm so glad you were able to capture that video. It really shows how the desert changes during the monsoon season. And all that water means lots of wildlife and the fact that Clint can't say soil. I can say soil. Soil. See, I can say it. All <laughs> right. He can say his soil, but you also had some really cool animal encounters. I did. The first one was encountered actually by Susan, and she called me over to meet one of Arizona's most iconic animals. And something really cool happened while we were filming. Hey everyone, we're here at the ranch, and Susan discovered this guy who is right here. Let's see if we can get a good look at him. Hopefully you can see him. It's hard for me to tell in this light. This is a male tarantula, adult, had its last molt, and it's coming out, and it's going to be looking for a female here very, very soon. Clint, did that tarantula just capture a cricket? It did. While we were filming, the cricket just happened to wander into frame. Wow, that is really cool, right? I mean, we had to slow it down to really see what actually happened. Well, that's not something you see every day. It certainly isn't. Now, we could go on and on about how important and amazing the Arizona Blonde Tarantula is, but we actually shot an entire episode on that earlier in the season. So if you want to see that episode, go to Critter Ed TV and go to our playlist, and you can check it out there. Yeah, but one thing we should mention right now, because it's a monsoon episode, is that the vast majority of tarantulas in Arizona are seen during the summer rainy season. Jeb, the rest of the year, they're underground. That's right. And the ones you're going to see out right now are typically going to be the adult, mature males looking for a mate. The females virtually never come out of their burrows. Yeah, almost never. They really are incredible animals. Venomous like all spiders, but virtually no threat to humans. So if you want to learn more about them, definitely check out that episode. Well, Clint, that tarantula video was really cool. But what was your second animal you encountered? It was a Colorado River toad, also known as a Sonoran Desert Toad. They're the largest toad in all of North America. I love the Colorado River toad. Let's go to that footage. Guys, this is a Colorado River toad. About a half a pound, finding some bugs to eat. And uh, we finally have had enough rain here in Tucson to bring these guys out. They're a lot of fun. If you ever end up touching one, you gotta remember to wash your hands because they do produce a poison. Not gonna kill you, but uh, you know, you still don't want to ingest it. Absolutely beautiful animal. You can see he's got plenty of weight on him, even though he's been underground for probably the better part of two years, because we didn't get much of a monsoon last year. So the rain is very welcome. It's a lot of fun. Let's see how close I can get to him. Just beautiful. And he's coming towards the light. You can see the poison on the insides of his eyes. The light's bringing in some bugs, so he's enjoying that smorgasbord. These guys are amazing. It's just incredible they stay underground for that long. And then they come out like, you know, sleeping beauty. Let's just enjoy them. Wow, another great video of the Colorado River Toad. I absolutely love this time during monsoon season. There's so much wildlife that's coming out, and hopefully if you guys are anywhere in this area, you get an opportunity to enjoy it. Now, you also may remember that Clint is trying to do the scorpion challenge, where he's trying to find and pick up 100 scorpions with his bare hands to prove once and for all that scorpions are not out to get us and are not really that dangerous. Now, Clint, you actually encountered a scorpion. I did. It's pretty common to find scorpions pretty much any time of year in Tucson with the exception of the dead of winter, but they're especially common during monsoon season because they're coming up out of a saturated ground to find dry areas under debris. Well, let's go to Clint's third scorpion. Hey guys, here with another, and let's see if I can get it focused.
can't really tell can't really tell if that's focused or not guys hopefully it is another cool little monsoon find this is a little striped tailed scorpion and I thought I would let everybody know that uh, somebody reached out to me on Facebook uh, somebody who's a scorpion expert here in Tucson and they said that they prefer striped tailed scorpion to them being called striped devil uh, in the professional scorpion world Strike Devil is more of a nickname, and uh, they just preferred that I not use Stripe Devil moving forward, so I will not. From now on, these will be just Stripe Tail Scorpions. Uh, I've never been stung by one of these guys. Uh, just pick up in the hand as long as you use a proper technique. Uh, I couldn't show you that this time because I'm alone, and I had to pick it up. Couldn't get the camera on it, uh, but hopefully this is coming out. Another cool monsoon find. This is scorpion number three in my scorpion challenge. Well, another scorpion in the books for Clint and a striped tail to boot. Yeah, so many people think of the striped tail scorpion as a particularly defensive species, but if handled properly, that is just not true. There's so much wildlife going on right now during the monsoon season, and we really hope you enjoyed this episode. We're going to close it out with some video that your daughter Sandra shot of some sights and sounds you might be hearing during the summer rain. And we'll see you next episode here at Critter Ed TV, where fear becomes wonder and wonder becomes passion. Bye, Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Guys.